Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1364, August 15, 2024. 103 degrees on this day in 1936 and 47 degrees on this day in 1960. Sly King. And now from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic. With Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. I have a phrase that I've allowed to bother me, and I want it eliminated from the English Language, the lexicon. Can we guess? Can we guess? You won't get it. Uptick. Well, we already covered that one. That oh, gets foghorn. We got it. No, it's a phrase. Hop on a plane. Oh. You can't hop on a plane. On in a plane. 19- this is a hill you're going to die on. Huh? In 1960, <laughs> maybe you could have run out to the airport, went in, bought a ticket to Chicago, and hopped on a plane in 10 minutes. Not anymore. Wait a minute. You can't hop on a plane. What if you're up by Kenny? And there's a guy that's going to spray for crops. He's hopping on that crop duster. I'm talking commercial flights. Mm, you can't hop this? on a plane. Ain't no hopping on a plane what, at the airport. What brought this about? I don't know. I, I hear the phrase all the time. Well, I hopped on a plane and went to Cincinnati. No, you didn't. He had to stand in a security line for two hours. Right. Then the plane was late and had to fix a tire or something. Well, you don't hop on planes something. anymore. Let me explain something to you, grumpy pants. It means at the last minute, I bought a, what do they call a fire sale ticket for cheap, and I decided to go see the Twins play in KC. I hopped on a plane. Hey, no, you didn't. It took you an hour to get to the airport. Then you were in security for another hour. <laughs> what if, though, when you're leaving the jetway... Yeah, you don't hop on a plane anymore. And if you leave the jetway as you enter the, what was it, what would you call that, the entrance for the plane, you're the hopping... Door? You're hopping past that little checkpoint. The galley? Uh, would that be hopping on a plane? Yeah, you'd literally be hopping on a plane. I was having this conversation with my sister who has been working for the uh, airlines since the 80s. And um, I used to fly, or I still do, I guess, non-rev. And she would give me a whole handful of blank tickets. And I could walk out to the airport, look at the departures, pick out my destination, write it on my ticket, go up to the desk, and hop on an airplane. <laughs> See? Can't do that anymore. No. Thank you. You've, you've just rested my case. <laughs> my, my point being that you can't hop on an airplane. I'm here to nuzzle up against you and kiss you on the neck. Wow. There's oh. something wrong with you. I, 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 Lucky I you, think Joe. you're probably right. Yes. Mike Hokinson, who we are finally going to meet at the State Fair, I, I don't remember the day he scheduled. I can find out. But he's scheduled. He's the fellow who wrote number one in Anguilla, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. He's from up uh, Detroit Lakes Way. He has a new song. It's called A Hundred Years Ain't What It Used To Be. Now, I have not heard it. It was sent to me, but when I tried to open it, it said, you, you can't listen to this. <laughs> Because you don't have the right stuff. But, that's, but you have the right stuff. Same here. So I would like to hear Mike's latest <laughs> song. A little canned heat. Maybe two out of 17, my old man was 55. If you do the math between the two of us, that's 72 years of life. And eternity, so it seemed to me, how could anything live that long? Now I say my folks were only 84 the year that they passed on. For a little while, it seems, you got time to choose your dreams. Pretty soon, you look around and you see. hundred years ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Damn, that's pretty good. <laughs> and my grandpa Roy, when he was a boy in 1904, well, he was taught by men who fought in the actual 
Civil War. Then only eight decades passed in my high school class. Put the castles on the other side. We started on our way for the naivete on the great American ride. The months and years slide past, each more quickly than the last. And pretty soon you look around and you see. A hundred years ain't what it used to be. I'm throwing some to buy again in my online shopping cart. Every week I learn something else I should be doing for my heart. If I use the wrong pillow. Time in the series, I sing this song, and I'm stunned to find I can wrap my mind around life is brief and dear. I can hardly believe my baby girl's turning 26 this year. For a little while, it seems you got time to choose your dreams. But pretty soon, you look around and you see. A hundred years ain't what it used to be. For you know when you're 63, making plans for Medicare A and B. You look around yourself and you see. A hundred years ain't what it used to be. You know... Th- oh my God! Yeah. I'm so depressed. I was talking. Oh. I was, I was, oh, Pat and I were chatting one day, oh. and and I said to Pat, "You know what? A hundred years ain't what it used to be." Yeah, what and Pat instantly about? knew what I meant. Yeah. So did this guy, Mike Holkinson, knew exactly what I meant. It's hard to describe. What I meant was, well, I meant a hundred years ain't what it used to be. I remember what you're talking about because uh, the twins are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Senators. World Series. I think that's what started the conversation. This has been an ongoing conversation, though, that you and I have been having for a couple of years now, Joe. And it started out with our grandpas or parents knew Civil War survivors. And we were talking about that two, three years ago. Yeah, and I just noted uh, one of the kids I used to have, her birth date was the date, August 2nd, was the date that the last Union Civil War soldier died in 1956, a guy in Duluth. Yeah. So my kid was born on a day when a Civil War veteran was still alive. Wow. Isn't that yeah. something? What I meant was when when we talked about things that happened in the past, it seemed, it seemed unreal. It was so long ago. Now 100 years ago is 1924. A hundred years ago used to be something in the in the eighties, in the eighteen hundreds. Mm. Now a hundred years ago is something in the nineteen hundreds. Anyway, Michael do that song for us and the Aguila song, and we're gonna meet him at the state fair. I can I can just play lead on that all day long. I wish now. you would. Maybe just he would I, love that. It, yeah, he it's an E. It's it's easy. I just picked up my acoustic while we were doing it. Hey, yeah. when are you guys gonna be at the fair? Huh. Good question, Chris. If you know, you I don't want any ba- more emails asking me that. Get it on the website. Before you guys fly into a rage and get into a fight, take your age. Um, um, take the year you were born okay. and then subtract the age you are now. Okay. And that'll make you feel real awful about yourself. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So, 1965. I'm 1931. Minus... 59. Oh, God. 1874. Oh, you know what? I will talk to, I'll talk to you on Monday, fellas. I'm going to just go sob. Kenny's oh, telling you the Alexandria Liquor 1974. 1906. I would guess me and Joe are the only ones in the 1800s. Oh, I'm in 1890. Oh. So, Rook, what are you? Oh. You've got to be in the 20s, right? Yeah. 
23. This is no, pathetic. you're in your 50s. I reject this. I reject yeah. this. You take, your, you take your birth date, your year. You know, the your year, year and subtract your age. Yeah, subtract and I do that and age. I come up with 1874. Wow. Yeah, 100 wow. years ain't what it used to be. It ain't what it used to be for you. <laughs> Heidi Ekman writes, I thought you might find it fascinating that the lilacs on Summit Avenue between Lexington and Hamlin are in full bloom at the very top right now. They opened for a second time just this week. Hmm. I did I've not never know heard that. Of that. I haven't driven by that way. I did I not will. know that. I am fascinated, Heidi. Thank you. On what street? That'd be Summit Avenue, Summit Matt. Summit between Lexington and, and Hamlin. Okay. That's right, Matt. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this is day 25 with the presidential appointee. She was anointed by the elites. She was dragged out of the back room and told that she was going to run for president, Kamala Harris. Uh, day 25, and it's to the point now where even the conventional news gatherers like the New York Times and the Washington Post are getting antsy. Hmm. Hey, lady, uh, come on, give us a little come something on. here. She just, uh, she just hasn't, uh, she's gone 25 days without holding a press conference or a sit-down interview of any kind after becoming the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee presumptive now she's busy she and uh matt foley are out on the campaign right. trail doing the harris and waltz. He, honest to god he's gonna do a cartwheel one of these days <laughs> it's like he just entered the stage for the, somebody told me for the price is right you know he's what do i win what he's win? waving Everything and going up and down and great mm. uh she's done nothing and we don't know a thing although uh She's been well, well nurtured by the press. Uh, the Washington Post editorial board now has challenged Harris over dodging the media, saying saying her of her opponent, at least he takes questions. The Post said it should account for her numerous... The Post said she should account for her numerous policy shifts, including on fracking, border security, and private health insurance. Now, we received a note yesterday from a GLer who looked at that analytically, and he deduced that she's not saying anything because she has a staff of people scrambling to make up excuses for her as to why she changed all her ideas. Mm. Maybe she thought, as long as I'm the VP, I can get away with saying no fracking, one health insurance for everybody, uh, we don't need border security. But now that she's been told by her betters that she's running for president, she's got to, she can't get away with that BS. So now they're scrambling to come up with ways that she can account for her change of heart. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what else do we know here? Uh, CNN's John Berman pressed Harris spokeswoman Adrian Elrod, saying the candidate clearly had time to do an interview if Harris was inclined. That same day, Senator Eric Schmidt, Republican Missouri, told Berman that Harris could not face difficult questions because she had an indefensible record. Jim Acosta I don't think it's uh, out of bounds to call him a liberal CNN anchor. Uh, he chided her campaign, asking communications director Michael Tyler, would it kill you guys to do one interview? Tyler laughed before reiterating Harris's vague pledge to do an interview by the end of the month. So that, that might be how much time her people need wow. to get her the right information. And to try to school her to not cackle so much. I don't, I don't feel, I, I, oh, I hate that when I hear people say that. I don't think that it's that deep, Joe. What is it? It's just, she doesn't have to. You don't have to do interviews anymore to win a race. It's been proven yep. in the past. Walls did it here. <clears throat> yeah. You know. I actually saw some Democratic folks on Twitter yesterday basically backing up what Kenny just said. 
But she does. She doesn't have to. Why, Why should she? she? Yeah. Why yeah. would? Yeah, she? she's got the liberal news machine behind her. And it doesn't matter what she says because they're going to vote for her. They they hate Trump that much. Well, I should say the crossover voters do. <clears throat> well, then I'm 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 wrong because what I said yesterday is. She should tell us what her policies are to convince uncommitted voters that she's a viable choice. But what you're telling me is she doesn't even need to do that. I personally don't think so. She doesn't even need to do that. There, there is a story today that Friday she'll be outlining her economic policies, but every story I've read about it says it'll be a very vague kind of re recap of of what the biden administration has so it probably won't give us much new information i'm guessing there is a most recent up-to-date political ad featuring a montage of the vice president i don't know if you're aware of this is it an ad yes is it run legit, by the Chris? trump people i would assume so all right but basically it's the the whole message of this ad was this is why they're hiding her all right essentially all right. let's see how long the mayor can last okay We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. Talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Ukraine is a country... Stop! For those of you that had 22 seconds, you can cash your tickets. <laughs> but you know what? It won't make any difference. None. That's pretty effective, though, that that kind of person is possibly going to be your president. Well, Kenny, you're talking about the significance of the passage of time. Not the New York Times or, and not the New York Post and certainly not the Minneapolis paper. But there are many outlets taking a long, hard look at uh, Walls' financial behavior. Uh, on, behalf of the, on behalf of the people in this state, yeah, it is yeah. Uh, really telling that he uh, his fiduciary responsibility to us has been an, uh, a complete failure, a complete failure. How do you like the uh, tax bounces that the mayors of St. Paul and Minneapolis want? Good well, Lord. Uh, oh, my God. Um, before you transition into that. I'm not. I'm not going to. I just, it was off the top, uh, top of my head. Go um, ahead. I, I don't think that kind of information coming out is going to hurt the Harris Walls ticket at all. I really don't. I I can't imagine what would actually hurt those two at this point. Then we're just a nation of idiots. Yeah. What's the Green yeah. Day song? That's American, American, American idiot. idiot. We're a nation I, I, of idiots that nobody we, we pays attention. This no, well, is pathetic. It's, yeah. Um, She's no more qualified to be president of the United States than anybody's pet. Let's take it to the debate. They've agreed on a debate, right? Yes. yes. She's going to lose that debate um, really badly, and she's still going to win the election. I she she has uh, I I think she's a bold woman and I think she's acerbic and I think she's fully capable of being a complete smartass so I'm not sure she'd lose the debate to Trump. Oh, okay. wow! I'm, I'm not sure I, she would. Oh, I wasn't ready for I, you to say that. I think in a way I agree with you, Joe, only because I think she matches up to use a sports cliche mm -hmm. better than say a, a normal politician like mm -hmm. a joe biden would you know like you just said she's a, a cervic and yeah you know, can be a smart ass and... but when you call her on something she just starts cackling she responds with cackling well like what you just asked her is the most absurd thing in the world the border or the economy or any of the issues well and uh, did I also see that Walls has agreed to debate yes. uh, Vance? Yep. That one should be a barn burner. That'll be fun to watch. Okay, and in that one, I expect Walls to be, uh, and it'll be interesting to watch that. I expect Walls to be completely driven by anger. 
just be very put the, upon. The, this and, idea that he's America's dad is the biggest phony baloney yeah. that the press has ever you come know, up this with. Is, this is going to be, Vance has got to play the rope-a-dope. Yep. Just keep poking away and let Walls get more angry by the second. I predict, That's all he, Vance has I predict to do. that Walls' driving force that day will be his anger. Yeah, go ahead and clap. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. But when Tim gets mad, he loses control of himself. He, doesn't he can't breathe. stay on track mentally. He starts throwing out insults. But Mysterians at their root are very angry people. Yeah, they don't like I've people. noticed. They're very angry people. And he's he. I think he's got a very short temper. Well, he's thin-skinned. There's no doubt. Very no, thin-skinned. Really? Uh, they really, really, really hate conservatives. Conservatives are not allowed to say anything. Well, when we come back, let's let's look at Ilhan Omar's view of that. Hmm. Right? Sounds like a plan. Say, mark your calendars. On September 28th, the Center of the American Experiment is bringing in Christopher Rufo for a night of sanity at the Intercontinental Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport Hotel. It's the center's fall briefing. They run a nice... They run a nice evening. Yeah. They move it along. It's bing, bang, boom. Yeah, you like that. Yes, there's a VIP reception and dinner that starts at 4, and the keynote address by Christopher Rufo is at 7. He's one of America's leaders in the fight against critical race theory in American institutions. His research and activism helped inspire a presidential order and legislation in more than 20 states. And he's a DEI expert. Uh, the witch is going to be the death of us, so uh, it might be it might be something you want to jot down in your calendar. Now, the seating is going to be limited, so reserve your spot today. Go to the AmericanExperiment.org slash events. American Experiment's one word. It's September 28th, AmericanExperiment.org slash events. If you want to have some fun and win some money while watching your favorite teams, you need to join over 5 million players who have won over $2 billion at Underdog Fantasy. Just go to underdogfantasy.com or download their easy-to-use app. Use the promo code GARAGELOGIC to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. You can use locals to win some money like I did with the Vikings Aaron Jones or a team favorite like Josh Jacobs. You could win up to 1,000 times your money by choosing higher or lower on player stats like touchdowns, home runs, three-pointers, and lots more. You pick who's hot and who's not and turn your sports opinion into real money. Download the app today. Use the code GARAGELOGIC to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Every player, every yard they pick up, just select higher or lower on Underdog. Must be 18+, plus, 19+, plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19+, plus in Colorado for some games, 21+, plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP and 1-800-639-8783 or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467-369. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times. And that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust. And that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts. And he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48-minute no-obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell them you heard about him here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. The earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. I would like to tell you before we get back into things uh, about something very important, and that is organ donation. LifeSource, the group that handles donations in much of the Midwest and Minnesota. Men, we're talking to you right now. We want to get you registered. Let me give you a stat. One person can save eight 
lives through organ donation. And one person can heal more than 75 lives through tissue donation with skin grafts for burn victims. And donated bone also can help with reconstructive surgeries. Here in Minnesota, almost half the men are not registered donors. It's easy to do. You can check the donor box when you get a driver's license. If you buy a hunting or fishing license here in Minnesota online, you can register to donate. Your iPhone health app can get you registered, or it's very easy online. Simply go to menaretheanswer.org and register. You can help save lives, lives like Brian. He was a dad of two, found himself needing a liver after being diagnosed with an incurable disease, got the liver, and he was able to be healed. Don't let misinformation stop you. You're never too old, and your health history, that'll never exclude you from donating. Let the folks who do the transplants figure out whether or not your organs can be used. Now, again, really easy to register. Just take a minute or two. Uh, stop by this website to do that. Men are the answer. Dot org and become an organ donor and help save lives. You know, the more I think about that, why so, not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was not? already told by my doctor that my liver is no good to donate. So Mine's fine. Yeah. Uh, there's a rook. You just gave some misinformation uh, that see, I already I you to correct me. took care of in the spot. It I doesn't know. matter. You, uh, your back, past history does not matter. Awesome. Here is your latest Ilhan Omar report on Garage Logic. There's no such thing as past history. <laughs> Good point. Your history. We can't oh. get any. I just bottom. can't. I just can't. I can't, can't take it. Me it just won't play along. So all the history. Did. History is the past. What was the other one that really bog- bothers you? Uh, Nine a.m. this morning. <laughs> That's really annoying. I'll go with you know, 4 p.m. this I afternoon. That. I hate that. Bergie pulled me aside one day and said, uh, can I uh, talk to you for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> did you just me. play the Ilhan Omar update? Sure did, Joe. Well, from our friend Bill Glan at the American Experiment, at what may be a first for the Feeding Our Future scandal, 11 defendants were inside the same courtroom at the same time this morning. That's yesterday morning. At the Federal Building in downtown Minneapolis, the occasion was the first edition of six scheduled monthly status conferences leading up to the Feb 2025 trial of the members of the Safari Restaurant Group. These are the lead defendants in the case, numbers 1 through 14, and include Amy Bach, number 1, former Feeding Our Future CEO. There are a total of 70 defendants charged so far in the larger Feeding Our Future scandal. And you know what? Thank God for a judicial system because Walls, seriously, Walls hasn't done a thing, mm-hmm. nor, nor has he admonished the people he put in charge. Not attending today's session was defendant number two, Abdi Kerm Idle, who was one of five fugitives from justice in the case. Wonder if he's the one that got to go home to square things up in Africa. And yeah, suddenly, yeah, right, yeah. suddenly missed when is he his coming back. When's suddenly he doing? missed his plane home. Uh, also not present was number f- present was number five Ahmed Sharif Omar Hashim, who has already pled guilty and been convicted. The court has scheduled a window from Feb until May 2025 to construct to conduct three trials of the remaining twelve Safari defendants. They'll do that in groups of four at a time. Attending via telephone was number 14, Abdiraham Ahmed, who now resides in Columbus, Ohio. The session began with only 10 defendants in the room. Number six, Abdul Nur Salah, was missing. His whereabouts unknown. You may recall that Mr. Salah is the former policy aide to Jacob Fry. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Mr. Salah finally arrived about a half hour late, attributing his tardiness to a family emergency. Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. The judge's response was, text your lawyer next time. The judge admonished Salah and reminded all 12 defendants that attendance was mandatory. The judge warned that the next instance would prompt him to dispatch law enforcement to corral the absent defendants. We're, We're getting to the good part. If this isn't good enough, Mm. bear with me. Besides Bach, the only other woman in this batch of defendants was Hamdi Omar, number 12, no relation to Ilhan Omar. 
This Omar is the youngest of the safari batch of defendants. Hamdi's name came up in the previous Feeding Our Future trial in connection with a defense witness. The next courtroom appearance for the group is scheduled for September 6 to hear miscellaneous pretrial motions. You will recall that I, Bill Glond, that I have documented extensively here and here, the technique links you to them, the connections between incumbent U.S. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar and figures linked to Safari Restaurant. One, Omar herself was making news last night, that would have been Tuesday night, celebrating her 2024 primary election victory. Readers will recall that Omar celebrated her 2018 August primary victory at Safari Restaurant. Alas, that venue was not available for last night's festivities as it has been permanently closed. Safari was formerly owned by defendants Salim Saeed, number three, and <laughs> Abdul Akhadur Salah, number four. Instead, this year's party was held at a different Minneapolis restaurant. In the 2022 election cycle, Omar received maximum campaign donations of $2,700 oh. each from Abdikaham Ahmed, number seven, and Ahmad Getty, number 13. So they were using our money and sending oh, it to my her. Word. Honest to God in heaven. They the, behave like the mafia oh, in New York. No, in I the would 30s. take the mafia over these guys. The yeah, news but the boldness, com- I mean. The news yeah. coming out of her 2024 victory party centers on, that would have been Tuesday night, centers on Omar's reference to her political opponents as Nazis. In other words, Reavers, you were telling me before the show that to her, a Republican is a Nazi. Yeah. Did, were you telling uh, me that? Uh, one of us was, yeah. I- so yeah. because Don Samuels had the report of some Republicans, she was labeling Republicans Nazis. <clears throat> Correct. Literal Nazis. I mean, she's on camera saying the, that very thing. Given her notorious anti-Semitism, it seems <laughs> odd that she'd be criticizing Nazis. Yeah, speak of the irony. Uh, God almighty. Of this that, matter. That the hypocrisy and the irony <laughs> cannot be kept track of. But she knows it, how to play uh, the game because she's just going to keep winning and getting elected. But it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter to the voters. Doesn't matter. And by the way, I'm so old. How old, How, old are you? Are you? How old are you? I remember suggesting that what if Ilhan was connected to the Feeding Our Future, and I can't... You guys remember the hate mail I got. Oh, you can't make that kind of a... Blah, 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 well, can blah. I read this? The news coming out of the 2024 Victory Party centers on Omar's reference to her political opponents as literal Nazis. Mm-hmm. But I'm... Uh, Bill Glahn writing this. I'm more interested in the event's attendees. It appears that Omar had a celebrity guest at last night's victory party. At the victory party, Omar gave interviews to reporters, including local Somali language correspondents, a TikTok account holder under the handle Guhadishi, posted a video of each encounter. Here's a screenshot of the video. The TikTok account appears to belong to Guhad Hashi Saeed, Defendant number 27 <laughs> in the feeding her future case. So she, would, she wouldn't come on Garage Logic, which just represents normal Minnesotans, but she'll talk to defendant number 27 because he has a TikTok account. She's a hell of a representative for I'm all of you people you, in District Joe, 5. she's fighting for us. Yes, she they is. Don't, they don't care at all, Joe. They do not care. You may recall that in prior election campaigns, Guhad served as a campaign volunteer before Omar, before Omar. And that, that was either before or after he became number 27. Much easier to refer to him as 27. Back in 2020, the website Powerline described Guhad as Ilhan Omar's enforcer. The enforcer? She was uh, one of his strong men. Fast forward to last night. Here are two images from Omar's party, and there they are. On the left, the man circled at Obama's party is believed to be Guhad. Omar herself appears in this picture. On the right is a selfie of Guhad on a screenshot taken from his TikTok video. A Facebook page under the name Guhad Hashi is also celebrating Omar's victory. 
Kuhad himself briefly ran for public office in 2018, but then realized he could fake uh, gain far more money. Rip- <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. <laughs> He held his own campaign event, as you guessed it. Where'd he hold it? At the Safari Restaurant. Yes. Where else? That's where everybody <laughs> Nobody goes there. It's too busy. After la- <laughs> after <laughs> Okay, Yogi. After last night, Omar is advancing to the general election. Kuhat Hashi Saeed is preparing for his courtroom trial in the Feeding Our Future case scheduled to begin in October of 2025. Guhad or Kuhad's next in-court appearance is scheduled for September 10. In f- other feeding our future news, feeding our future news yesterday, defendant 68. You know, you know 68. I know 67. Sure. You know 27. Uh, 27. Right? That's yeah. Fadumo, isn't it? Yes. Fadumo? Yeah, yes. That's right. Kenny know knows him. 68. Kenny, yeah, yeah. 68 is Fadumo Yusuf. Made yep. her first appearance in federal court with the help of a court. Provided language interpreter. That probably doesn't cost us that much, does mm-hmm. it? She was formally arraigned in the case. The trial date for Yusuf and her six co-defendants has yet to be set. Well, this is more fun than you can sh- shake a stick shake at. Shake a stick at, you isn't know? it? And so, Question. Yes. Do you suppose the voters of five realize she's been linked to the Feeding Our Future defendants? I'll Do use you your think answer. they even know that? I'll use your answer to answer you. Apparently, they just don't give a damn. If she was, in fact, herself a defendant and then found guilty, do you think they would still vote for her? Yes. In five? Yes. Yeah, so do I. Yes. So do I. She is, without a doubt, the biggest fraud I have ever seen in my years of looking at politicians. I don't think she's a fraud at all. I think she's wearing it all on her sleeve. Okay, I think not she fraud. could come out Phony. and say Phony. she could admit to uh, malfeasance and guilt and say and also say by the way, I hate all Jews and she would still win in the five. Well, she's virtually admitted that she uses her office as an adjunct of the Somali government. Yeah, she's here to serve the Somali people. She is here to serve Somalia. Yeah. Why do we tell? Well, well, I guess the answer would be that must ring okay with all the Somalis who vote for her. But you can't even use the excuse of Don Samuels. It's he's not a Republican. No, he's not. And and Joe, it's it's not just Somalis though. It's not just Somalis voting for her. Five Every, is big. Everybody write down this name. Come on now. Dahlia. D-A-L-I-A. D-A-L-I-A. Al. A-L. Dash. Akiti. A-Q-I-D-I. Uh, she's a refugee from Iraq. We've mentioned her before. She is yeah. running against no. Omar in November. We need to familiarize ourselves with her. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dahlia, we probably can't help you because everyone we've ever tried to help has lost. But I'm for you. Uh, and she she is Dahlia Al-Akidi, and she's, she's the Republican candidate running against Ilhan Omar. And she's wanted to make a difference everywhere I go, she said. She's a longtime journalist. She fled Iraq in 1993, became an American citizen, and resolved to run for office late last year after Omar's sharp criticism of how Israel is conducting the war in Gaza. This means a lot to me, and I spent my entire life fighting against these regimes and fighting against these ideologies, said Al-Aqidi. Uh, I've made it clear I'm a moderate Republican willing to work with moderate Democrats and independents, said al We need to unite to save our city, district, and our country. And I think she means save it from Omar. Yeah. Hmm. She has no elected experience, except there's a new political data trend that shows... Uh, there's just more amateur candidates running and voters are willing to back them. So here you go. Uh, 
We need to learn. Things. We need to learn more about her. We need to have her website. on the air. Pardon? Great website. She's got a wonderful website. Well, you guys recall not that long ago. Remember, there was a Somalian um, festival, and Ilhan was brought on stage, and they booed her. You guys recall that? That wasn't that long ago. She does nothing for her district, and she does nothing for the state of Minnesota. Because I think the Somalian people that came here wanting to assimilate and become Americans, they don't like her. Well, they have a choice. Anybody... Go ahead. They have Dahlia al Akidi. Hmm. Um, she's got two things working against her. She's too white looking for the voters in the five. Well, I'm looking at a picture. She doesn't appear to be too white looking to me. And she's Republican. She's red. Well, she's more than willing to work with Democrats. That's more than you can say about Omar is not willing to work with anybody except Mysterians. Right. You got to wonder if the people in the outskirts of the five have ventured down to Cedar Riverside as of late, maybe traveled Riverside from Cedar uh, over to the freeway, hung out in that neighborhood around the hospital, around Franklin. Should we have her on, or do you not want to jinx her? <laughs> I, I, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's shame. It's a shame that we would be jinxing her to have her on. But well, we have awful. to. Well, let's put it this way: Is anybody in the five listening to us? And do they care about what we say? Well, we've Are got we just... we've got listeners in the belly of the beast. Uh, and they're they're attuned. They're 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 not Omar fans, but there's I think in five there's just too few GLers. There just aren't enough. It's uh, at this point, if any, there's probably well, there's Steve Mall, Bell into the belly of the beast. A lot of a lot of blue collar people down there. I I used to live in the five. Well, apparently, the the apathy is so significant. That this Omar, Omar is a Somali Amy Klobuchar. She can just, yeah. if she lives yeah. to be 110, uh, 100 years won't be what it used to be. That's what right? I heard. Right. She could hold that office because apparently people don't care that she doesn't give a bleep about them. She's Trump-like. She doesn't care about the people. She's in it for herself. Right. Yep. The summer months, Matt... Mm-hmm. Are here. We're in the thick of the summer season? for normal people. Can take a toll on your garage door. Yeah, and Warping. I know. You, well, I know yours is uh, often up and down, up and down, up and down. Right? Exactly. Okay. How many openings do you think a garage door gets in its lifetime? Ten thousand, maybe. More than that. Ten thousand. More than that. If you need garage door work, you go to the people that the GLers are favoring mightily. Precision Door. They serve Western Wisconsin and the entire metro. Uh, they do everything up to and including a new door, and they'll send out a designer for a free estimate. They have models for every budget in the event you need a door. But they take care of the springs and the rollers and the apps and the rails everything. that the rollers run on and the chain and the whole deal. And get this. She busts on you on a Saturday or Sunday. They don't charge more for weekend visits. That really sets them apart. Nice. And especially if you've ever been stung by having to call an outfit on a weekend visit. Uh, from now on, it's only Precision Door. Put this number in your contacts. Precision Door, 612-263-6985. You can make an appointment online. You can schedule your free on-site New door estimate online and online it's precision door mn dot com. Mike Schoonover um, is on the phone with us. I'm going to be okay. There's a reason why I'm so disjointed this morning. Uh, Positive Thursday always brought to us by Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care up in Shoreview, 1060 County Roadie, or down in Shoreview, over in Shoreview. Uh, pretty much anything you need related to auto care can be had at Schoonover's. Uh, Mike, how are you? I'm good, Kenny. Good to be with you again here uh, this week. I'm going to be honest with you, Mike. I'm shook. Uh, for the last, well, 
I don't know, I'm going to say 15 years, my nephews have spent the summer with us, and they're on a plane now. They just got on a plane this morning going back to their homes in Texas, and this was the last summer that they're going to be here because as soon as they get back to Texas next week, they're starting in uh, automotive training, a, a college, and they'll be in this college until February 26th. They went to this college on a full scholarship. They're pretty bright kids, and I'm guessing they're going to have jobs before they graduate from school. What is the outlook for kids now in automotive school, either body work or, you know, wrenching? What is the outlook for these kids? Well, it's huge. I mean, uh, God bless them for going to to uh, tech school because especially down in Texas, man, they're going to have all kinds of opportunities down there. But yeah, I mean, you can, uh, I mean, you have not only the body work side of things, within the body work side, you have sales and, and management uh, opportunities. You You can be a painter or you can be a body technician. And then on the mechanical side, you, you can be a uh, uh, a wrencher for European vehicles, for Asian vehicles, for regular vehicles, for trucks. Uh, you know, truck mechanics are are in dire need um, right now. So, uh, and there's no shortage or stoppage of of how many trucks are on the road and vehicles are on the road. So, uh, and then in that industry, you have sales and management and and all types of things. And then, you know, the part that we don't want to see is we don't want to see uh automotive related mines going to work on the dark side as we call it on the insurance claim side so we want to keep them over uh wrenching on vehicles and fixing cars and helping helping our customers out so i but yeah there's plenty of opportunity uh my nephews are not the paperwork kind um they're twins and they've got a couple side hustles going and one of them handles all the sales all the phone calls and all the dealing with customers, the other one strictly wrenches, and they make a hell of a team. And uh, I'm pretty sure they've got more money in their bank account right now than I do. That's how successful Kenny, what, they are. Kenny, what's their name? Uh, tra- uh, Tyler and Devin. Yeah, and they just got out of plane. This- yeah, yeah. I, I've been telling them for years. <laughs> you guys, you guys are going to make it big. You know, if there's a dollar to be found, they'll find it. And um, I'm really hoping that they'll start their own business, you know, and do that. But it's nice yeah, to hear that there are opportunities for kids. Yeah, and it's there are just you know, I mean, even though the government wants us to be driving government cars, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. And and there's just so many opportunities for. I, I don't think the com, uh, internal combustion engine is going away anytime soon. So yeah. the need for service and maintenance and repair is 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 incredible how are you guys looking you need any work uh any help right now you know i am trying to find a uh, a, sh- a shop helper somebody who can uh, uh help in each department uh uh and and somebody who's knowledgeable with the shop area so uh we we don't you know it's it's going to be uh we've we've been very picky and choosy about who we're going to hire and um because we can because the the market has changed a little bit and uh, there's a lot of shops out there that are not doing well or don't treat their people well. So you know, right. if there's uh, if there's some GLers working in a in another shop right now, you know, they can always drop me a, or give me a call, and we'll see if we got a spot for them. Nice, thanks. Good tip, Mike. Garage Logic Official Body Shop. They've been at it there in uh, Shoreview since 1938. Skinover Body Works. That's correct. Care. Always rated as one of the top shops in the metro. The website, schoonoverbodyworks.com. Thank you, Mike. You bet, Kenny. Have a good day, guys. Corner to you. This guy wears many hats, just not indoors. Joe Suchere. John Height. Yes, Joe. You're on. Oh, well, thank you very much. This news is brought to you by North American Banking Company. Uh, We uh, talked about this a bit earlier. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry proposing a $1.88 billion budget yesterday for 2025. That will include an 8% property tax increase. 
In that budget, public works employees get a 30% pay increase over the next three years and police get a 21% pay hike. The mayor said the city faced a $21 million budget shortfall, but the city tapped its reserve account to help keep city services at the same level as 2024. The proposed property tax hike, according to the city, if you have a median home of around $330,000, it would cost you about $209 a year. Fry also approved an increase for the parks and rec boards portion of the property tax, but the park board will receive $88 million, and that's $2 million less than the $90 million they requested. Park board president Meg Forty <laughs> told five... God, oh, 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 my word. $90 board... million dollars they but, wanted. Oh. Hang on, you haven't heard the best part yet. Park Board President Meg Forty told Five Eyewitness News the mayor's proposed budget is unfair to them. She told Park. Uh, she told Five Eyewitness News it would mean the Park Board will have to consider possible cuts, including staff. Forty said the Park Board will appeal this proposal before the Board of Equalization and Taxation in September. The proposed property tax increase is just the city's portion. Of course, the rest of a property owner's tax bill comes from Hennepin County the Minneapolis School District, and the Met Council. Um, may I bring an off-air conversation do, do, on uh, here? You're going to, but let me just say, do, don't you love the fact that the unelected Met Council has taxing authority? Isn't that wonderful? That's a wonderful world. It's a hell of a way to go, isn't it? They can <laughs> shut businesses down yeah. you know, like they did in Hastings. They can't build a light rail line, but they can shut a business down. <laughs> right. Well, they can spend your money. <laughs> you yeah. were talking about the St. Paul City staff, right? They have 3,000 Well, roughly? there's more than 3,000 employees in the city of St. Paul. Our math was way off, so thank you to Hans for clarifying. Yeah. It's not what we said. Basically, the population is around 200,000. I said that. That's one worker for every 67 people. I want to know oh. who my worker is. 67 people. There's a city employee for every 67 people. Hell, teachers have wow. more than that in the classroom sometimes. <laughs> who, else? who lives in St. Paul again? Oh, I that's do, Joe. and I want to know okay. who my employee is. is I want to know where the gold at. Me and the 66 other people in my group. Right. We want to know who our employee Gonna is. Going to start meeting mm-hmm. together. Right. I'd yeah. like to get together. <laughs> Four people are in serious condition at an area hospital. Dozens of people out of their home following a late-night apartment fire in Minneapolis on Tuesday. And it appears, according to officials, the fire may be the result of arson. Officials with the Minneapolis Fire Department responding to reports of someone possibly starting a fire just after 9.30 in the evening Tuesday at Stadium Place Apartments off 11th Avenue South near East 15th Street in the city's Elliott Park neighborhood. Statement by a Minneapolis Fire Department spokesperson said crews responded to reports of somebody starting a fire. Arriving firefighters were confronted with heavy flames on a rear stairwell, which spread to other parts of the four-story building. Fire officials say three people, two adults and a child, are being treated for burns, and a fourth, identified as an adult, was treated for smoke inhalation. Two firefighters were also evaluated at the scene for overexertion, but were released from the hospital. In addition, a dog was rescued and provided oxygen before being reunited with its owner. As of this time, cause of the fire still being investigated. Wasn't that, that's right around the Elliott Park neighborhood, is it not? Yes. In uh, downtown Minneapolis, south south of the uh, Park, Viking excuse me, Stadium. South, yeah, southeast Minneapolis, downtown. Yep. Yeah. I wonder if that, Start. just speculating, has anything to do with a homeless person or, you know, mm-hmm. that's just wild speculation, though. Star Tribune reporting four people in an SUV were killed when a trucker slammed into a string of vehicles that were stopped for road construction on a northern Minnesota highway. The crash involving two semi-trailer trucks and three SUVs occurred shortly before 3 o'clock yesterday west of Duluth on Highway 2 near Nelson Road. There were nine people occupying the five vehicles that were involved in the accident. The chain reaction wreck began when a semi-truck driver struck the stopped vehicles at highway speeds, according to the Highway Patrol. Mm. The patrol has yet to say why the trucker failed to stop. Road conditions were dry at the time. The trucker, Gregory Scott Anweiler, 63 years old from Grand Rapids, suffered non-critical injuries, was taken by emergency medical responders to a Duluth hospital. This is the second fatal crash involving Anweiler in recent years. On December 8, 2020, he was hauling logs on southbound High One, uh, Highway 169 north of Hill City when an SUV driver heading the other way sideswiped the truck, according to 
to the state patrol. Uh, killed in the crash yesterday uh, was the SUV driver, 65-year-old Vincent Lewis Dow of Black Duck, Minnesota, and his three passengers. The three passengers have not yet been identified. GMC Acadia, small. Ford Escape, small. Honda Pilot, small. International semi-truck. What do you do, Joe? Uh, I'm. If you've ever been rear-ended before, you become obsessed with your mirror. So you're always watching your mirror. What do you do if you look up and you see that thing 50 yards behind you coming at you full steam? You got nowhere to go in front of you. Well, do I have anywhere to go to the side of me? You got to get out and run, brother. Yeah, maybe that's And it. what about the rest of your family that's in there with you? You know? Well, unstrap them and get them out of there, I guess, if you have yeah. time. It doesn't mm, sound folks, like you'd have time. GLers, watch your mirrors. Always watch your mirrors. A 34-year-old man charged in connection with a shooting at a St. Paul bus shelter that happened back in July. Santonio San Marquis Mar uh, Ferguson faces one count of first-degree assault, one count of first-degree aggravated robbery, and one count of illegally possessing a firearm as a felon. Both Metro Transit and St. Paul Police responded to the shooting around 3.30 in the afternoon, July 27th. There they found a man slumped in a bus shelter with a gunshot wound to the abdomen. The victim needed surgery on his bowels and rectum. He also had a fracture to a bone near the base of his spine, and there were bone fragments in the nearby muscle. The victim's girlfriend told police a man approached her and the victim at the shelter, pulled out a gun, tried to steal the victim's electric bike. He then shot the victim and rode off on the bicycle. Surveillance video showed a man later identified as Ferguson walking around the area near the bus stop with his hands in a bag. He then walks toward the victim out of camera view. There's abrupt movement from people nearby consistent with shots being fired. Police were able to identify Ferguson as the man in the video due to unique tattoos on his face, throat, chest, and forearm. Court documents note that Ferguson had been convicted of two counts of second-degree assault in 2018 for robbing and shooting two men during a drug deal. Uh, why By the way, a stop a second. Here? Yeah. Before you take a break, John, I, I'm still on the State Patrol website. The two fatalities there in that aforementioned story, they were both in the Honda Pilot. Um, so that must have been the first vehicle that the semi struck, I would assume. Wait, I, I want to thank you for this because now I'm three, imagining three trying fatals. to get this kid out of a baby seat. Four fatals? Four, four fatals, yep, according to the oh, uh, news uh, My website is saying one, two, three, yep, four. I'm sorry. All in the Honda. Got it. Why don't we take a quick break and uh, hear from the mayor, Mr. Souchere. Well, I want to tell you right now, the pup is back. Is it pup season? It's the pup. <laughs> What's it, up, pup? Frano pup. Is the official food on a stick? It's one of the first things you have. Garage logic. Fair. One of the first things you have. Every fair. You do. I know for a fact. You I do. Mm -hmm. I have a proposal. Yeah. I think we should open up a side window at our little and sell the pup slash cabin and sell nothing but pups. I don't know why they wouldn't. It's the state fair's original food on a stick. Still the best value. It's a wiener, done in a bun. In a bun. Uh huh. Now, here's the deal. Here's why I like Prano Pups. They go back to 1947. 100 years ain't what it used to be. 47. That's been a long time. The Carnes family has been selling Prano Pups for a long time. And as you've pointed what, out. 88 years, 87 years? <laughs> no. No, it'll be about let's, 77. 75? 77, 77 oh, yeah, years. I was thinking. Uh, 7 7 is 14. 2024. 20, it's 77 years. 77. And it's, 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 uh, prano dough. Right, or it's, it's a special uh, flower. It's mix. a thing. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. It's not the corn. I liken it to the corn. I liken it to the booyah recipe. They Secret. Keep its tops. Carnes is not going to give it at, just to anybody. They're going to hang on with the brothers. Know what they're doing. Well, the brothers are Greg and Wayne. Unless Look, you buy a franchise, and then of course they're going to give it to you. There's eight locations throughout the fairgrounds. Support the Prano Pup this year. It's the official food on a stick in Garage Logic. Mm -hmm.
not a Garage Logic town council member. Here's what you're missing. The entire neighborhood was out wondering what was happening because the bass notes were so loud and so all penetrating. The, can you imagine all of those white people calling 911? Right. <laughs> not very rhythmic white people yeah. were outside wondering what in the what, hell is that what, noise? What, what, <laughs> what day is this? Tuesday? Yeah. It would have been a week ago. EDM Fest. Uh, Proof that the, these kids have no soul. I that, thought for sure it was a car parked in front of my house. With the, you know how the cars yeah. get the big bass deal going. <laughs> I would have loved to see all you old. <laughs> I know. This just sounds your like bridges you know, and wandering although, around. As You're much as I like to <laughs> pile on, Kenny, that was the worst part about bartending <laughs> downtown. Was what in cornbread was... hell is that racket? <laughs> Having to listen to that crap. I, Holy I can call Nikes, my, Grandma. I can call my, my kid down here to talk about it if you'd like because he's this actually This makes me DJ. want to take my pants yeah, off. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. The earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. You know, um, I got the talk this morning about back to school shopping. Yeah, starts earlier every year. It really it? does. I did not realize how expensive back to school shopping is. Thus, I'm making a stop on my way home at North American Banking Company because I got to get some yeah. cash. Uh, but here's the deal uh, I've switched from my big national bank to my friends at North American Banking Company. And here's why it's banking done differently. When you go in, they greet you by your first name. They're ready to help you, whether it's uh, your personal uh, business or whether you have a, your own business that you'd like to have uh, loan decisions made. That, that They're here to help you, and they want to take care of all the people that make the Twin Cities a great place to live. So here's the deal. They have six locations. Mine's in Roseville. But you can also see them at 50th in France, Hastings, Woodbury, Shoreview, and their brand new location in Maple Grove. They do offer the same online and mobile banking options as the other banks, but you're going to get the unparalleled service of a community bank and that mobile banking is so easy how easy, how is, easy it? is it guys like joe would be able to figure it out that's something north north american banking company is also locally owned and operated and that means loan decisions are made right here in the twin cities not sent out of state so this helps business owners solve problems quickly and expand their business with confidence so the first step is to check them out online today it's nabankco.com to learn more nabankco.com is the website it's banking done differently north american Banking Company member FDIC is an equal housing lender, John. Thank you, Chris. As Kenny alluded to earlier, Vice Presidential Candidates Tim Walls and J.D. Vance will take the stage for a debate. It's scheduled for October 1st. Yesterday, the Harris campaign confirming they had accepted an invitation uh, for the vice presidential debate. Then this morning, J.D. Vance announced he had also accepted the debate scheduled for October 1. He says he also accepts an invitation for a CNN debate on September 18th. No word on if Walls has accepted the September 18th challenge, which would be just a week, uh, over a week from the debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Uh, Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. sought a meeting last week with Democratic nominee Harris to talk about the possibility of serving in her administration, perhaps as a cabinet secretary, if he throws his support behind her campaign and she wins, according to Kennedy campaign officials. Harris and her advisors have not responded with an offer to meet or shown any interest in the proposal. The Kennedy outreach made through intermediaries follows a meeting in Milwaukee last month between Kennedy and Republican nominee Donald Trump to talk about a similar policy role and endorsement that resulted in no agreement. In those discussions, Kennedy spoke about advising Trump in a second term on health and medical issues. I just read a long, long, long profile of Kennedy, of, uh, the junior, the kid. He is, uh, uh, he's almost professional sports-like in his, uh, shall we say, success with women. Okay. Well. Okay. He's uh, had options. a good uh, run. A lot he's of had, options. Got a lot. Of, he's had a wonderful had a run. run. I think okay. I think Cheryl I'll, Hines is number three, but he um, hasn't let that. He hasn't let a marriage interfere with his pursuit. Got it. I yeah. think I yeah. Yeah. he kept a log, right? Didn't he? I don't know if he kept that, a log. Yeah. He might have a log. I believe he. Yeah. Well, just is it, is it video? 
I don't know. Video? No, it was, was a Kennedy became very interested quickly. Don't you think that kinda. just having the Kennedy name kind of gets you an, an, an extra foot oh, in yeah, the door? If you're a, can if I, you're a uh, fifth cousin once removed, you're throwing that everywhere, especially Can I east. drag this show out of the gutter and oh. ask a serious question? Oh, if you pigs don't mind. Oink, yeah. oink. <laughs> Um, well, the one thing I've noticed about his supporters, is they are adamant Kamala haters. Yeah. They hate her. Huh. How are they going to feel when they get news of this meeting? And and if he drops out and accepts a cabinet role, oh, you've got some angry voters yeah. there. Yeah, I could he see must them. Need a job. I could see those voters going for Trump. Maybe. Anyway. Vladimir Putin's leadership is, quote, already being questioned by colleagues. This, according to the Russian president's former speechwriter, Abbas Galyamov, told the Daily Express. Uh, he worked for Putin, by the way, from 2008 to 2012. That Ukrainian incursion could seriously undermine Putin's authority. He said the process of questioning his leadership is already on the go and failure in Kursk will definitely speed up the process. He said the more Ukrainians are present on Russian soil, the stronger and deeper the process goes. Putin has vowed to kick out the enemy after a huge incursion into Russia by Ukraine, but Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said yesterday his troops are still advancing in Russian territory. He said we continue to advance further in the Kursk region from one to two kilometers every day. Hunter Biden sought assistance from the U.S. government for a potentially lucrative energy project in Italy while dad was vice president, that according to newly released records and interviews. The records, which the Biden administration had withheld, indicate that Hunter Biden wrote at least one letter to the U.S. ambassador to Italy in 2016 seeking help for the Ukrainian gas company Burisma, where he was a board member. Embassy officials appear to have been uneasy with the request from the son of a sitting vice president on behalf of the foreign company. Abby Lowell, a lawyer for Biden, said his client asked various people, including the U.S. ambassador to Italy at the time, John Phillips. No meeting occurred, no project materialized, and no request for anything in the U.S. was ever sought. Only an introduction in Italy was requested, and nothing ever became he says of that request. I don't think that was on the up and up. Yeah, I don't. That's either. my suspicion. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, one other note about the election. I know we're we're trying not to you know go crazy with the election, but I I just like this one because it involves our former governor Jesse Ventura. Mm -hmm. Last week he endorsed Kamala Harris and Tim Walz in the November re election, and you may recall Hulk Hogan appeared at the Republican convention endorsing <laughs> Donald Trump. Yep. Well, well, this has caused some folks to compare the two and harken back to their days as professional wrestlers when the two had a real beef that concerned Jesse being for the unionization of wrestlers and Hogan against. Yes. And, and now the serious. Yeah, oh, yeah. It now was. the comparisons are not sitting well with Jesse. He said in a recent interview, why would they lump me in with Hulk Hogan? Between six years in the Navy, being a mayor and a governor, Ventura noted he spent about as much time in public service as he did in professional wrestling, something, he says, Hulk Hogan never did. He said, and I quote, Hulk Hogan, he's like Donald Trump. He never did one day serving his country. Hogan's contact with the political world has been more indirect, of course. Uh, Peter Thiel, the billionaire entrepreneur who in 2016 was one of Trump's top donors. and sure, who sure. I'm not sure which impersonation to do first. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Influence of Trump's orbit helped bankroll a legal fight that Hogan waged, you might remember this, against Gawker Media after Gawker published a video of him having sex with the wife of a radio host. Yeah, what well, a mess. In his convention speech last uh. month, Hogan said, I tried to stay out of politics, but he said he felt compelled to support Trump, who he described as my hero. Wait. This there Go goes I have so many my questions. Hero. Finish it first, John. The, well, the the beef, I was just going to tell you how the beef started. It was back in 1986. Uh, Jesse had called a meeting in the locker room before WrestleMania II with his fellow wrestler, wrestlers saying they should form a union. 
Well, then he didn't find out until years later that Hulk Hogan went to Vince McMahon and ratted him out. Send him a letter. Those Hold on, Matthew. <laughs> Wait a second, Matt. Go ahead. Yeah. Matt. There's a lot was to it, unpack. Yeah. Was it Bubba, it the really love is. sponge yes. that was being yes. cuckolded? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah a real exactly. greasy, slimy, gross situation. Now, oh, I wonder yeah. what our own Peter Thiel interviewing the body would sound like about this topic. Hello, hi, Gar. This is Peter. I just want to tell you, you are um, really uh, relevant in far as politics are concerned. I don't know. I don't know why. I ain't in office anymore. What's your name, Pedro? Uh, it's Peter. Hi, this is Peter. This is Peter, and I I like cheese. I like cheese. Yes, I do. What the hell does this have to do with cheese? Now let's talk union. Are you a Confederate or are you a union? You're pro-union, aren't you, sir? I'm pro-union, you know. I told everybody, this is WrestleMania 7 or whatever it was, and this is the time to strike. Yeah. I gathered them all around. We had the folding chairs that we were going to be beating each other up on. You know, they were all sitting in a circle. And I said, uh, uh, hey, I got a great idea. Let's, let's unionize and stick it to McMahon. And, of course, uh, a trader, trader Terry... You know, he ran like a little schoolgirl with his um, his frock billowing up into his face, and he he snitched on us. Yeah, and that was it. I'm for sorry me. that didn't work out for you, Governor. I, I don't know. It did. I don't know. Were you and Hulk wrestling at the same time for Vern? I know you both yes. did a, a long stints here. Yeah, and uh, the locker room was quite. Uh, you could cut the tension with a knife. You know, Terry, uh, Terry Hogan, uh, he ain't never been a SEAL. Uh, he ain't never been UDT. Uh, he tried to play one on television, and I told him, I've done the real deal. That's the yeah. question I wanted to ask, because, Governor, you seem to uh, take umbrage with the fact that Hulk never served, yet you're endorsing two candidates that also did not see combat. You know, I don't, uh, I don't uh, dwell on the details. Are you endorsing Harris Walls? Uh, yeah, I like the dance. Yeah. yeah, I like when he parades out. Uh, he's, a, he's a, his mouth is a gape. Yes, he and, is, and his hands are flailing. Yes, he's. And I don't. I think he'll do a cartwheel, sir. Uh, I wish he would, but yeah. uh, you know, he was a football coach, and I I coached football. I was the trainer <laughs> for um, who was it? The uh, the Rebels? No, uh, the Rapids. Brooklyn no. Center. Brooklyn no. Center. Park. Blaine. Champlain Park. Lane. Champlain. 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 I was Champlain. Yeah, I I trained those Didn't guys. Didn't you make him swim in a sewer one day or a holding pond or something? Like yes, I wanted the them holding to be pond tough. to be good for you. You know, because sometimes those football <laughs> fields they'll uh, they'll sp uh, fill up after a big rain. Yeah, I know. So you got to be able to swim, right? You know. Well, keep your head above I'm not water. Not a very strong swimmer. Uh, that concludes this, um, this instance of wasn't much of an interview, was it, uh, Pedro? I uh, you know Peter. Yeah, him too. Wow. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got for okay. you, Johnny. Why don't you over? continue? All right, I'm done to him. I'm gonna go out and record on this corner. Peter sounds kind of sounds like Al Franken on occasion. I was, you know, I was thinking the same thing. He was going Franken there, <laughs> but I didn't want to interrupt him. Uh, he was rolling. Kind of no, he was on a roll. Yeah. You know, Franken has a little more um, uh, power to his voice. Uh, Peter just kind of it's a little higher. Yeah. Uh, Franken, he's got you know maybe there's pretzels in the bar car. <laughs> so there is a there's the a, li car. a slight distinction. Uh -huh. He worked in a trading. Yes, he did. Of course, of course he did. He, did. he worked yeah. in but a trading places line as as the uh, as the baggage carrier. Yeah, authorities have arrested at least one person in connection with Matthew Perry's death from an accidental ketamine overdose last year, according to law enforcement. The official, not authorized to talk about details, spoke on the condition of anonymity. Authorities are holding a news conference later on today to talk about it. And police said in May they were working with the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service with a probe into why the 54-year-old had so much surgical anesthetic in his system. An assistant found Perry face down in his hot tub October 28th, and paramedics who called immediately declared him dead. The autopsy said the amount of ketamine in his blood was in the range used for general anesthesia during surgery. Oof. Decades-old drug had seen a huge surge in recent years as treatment for depression, anxiety, and pain. People close to Perry told the coroner's investigators he was undergoing ketamine infusion therapy. But the medical examiner said Perry's last treatment one and a half weeks earlier wouldn't explain the levels of ketamine in 
his blood could have been listed as the primary cause of death, which was ruled an accident with no foul play suspected. Drowning and other medical issues were contributing factors. Perry had years of struggle with addiction dating back to his time on the TV show Friends when he became one of the biggest television stars of his generation as Chandler Bing in the show. It ran for 10 seasons from 1994 to 2004. John, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Please take a break. Yeah. You cannot stop him. He'll just make a move. Joe Suchere. Make your move to EcoFun Motorsports. Lots of really great autumnal riding coming up on your electric bike. Maybe a Bintelli or a Scoot Star. Forest Lake location has them. They're the electric bike capital of the world at EcoFun Motorsports. Forest Lake slash Columbus, just west of Interstate 35 on Highway 97. Scooters, motorcycles, ATVs, Yamaha Wave Runners, side by sides, and electric bikes with a great parking lot. Talked to a guy the other day. He did the parking lot bit. Let's okay. take it outside. Let's check the comfort, the tires, the whole deal, and you leave with the right package and you'll be riding gloriously yeah. until the snow falls. And maybe if you're one of those bikers that rides in the winter, you get the you get the bike that'll go in the winter. Still moving it. It's uh, it's a, a really a playground. If you own a lake place or a country property, EcoFun Motorsports is the greatest store you could ever visit. Great service too, and apparel and helmets, and great people. And there are two locations: the EcoFun location in Forest Lake slash, slash Columbus, and EcoFun down in Burnsville on the service road of life near County Road 42. Also a great website, ecofunmotorsports.com. A, a group of teens in Detroit took a field trip to a courtroom to see how the system worked. Okay. And uh, A sneak preview, or was this... Uh, yeah, is this, this is going to be your life? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's the way it turned out. Oh. A teen on the trip ended up in jail clothes and handcuffs because the judge said he didn't like her attitude. <laughs> judge Kenneth King even asked other kids in the courtroom Tuesday whether the 16-year-old girl should be taken to juvenile detention. Wow. King works at the 36th District Court. I wanted this to look and feel very real to her, even though there's probably no chance of me putting her in jail. This is my own version of Scared Straight, King said referring to a documentary about teen offenders in New Jersey. The teen was seeing King's Court as part of a visit organized by the Greening of Detroit, a nonprofit environmental group. During the visit, King noticed the girl falling asleep, according to WXYZ. Hey, you fall asleep in my courtroom one more time, I'm going to put you in the back. Understood, the judge said, according to video. King then had the girl change into jail clothes and wear handcuffs. It was her whole attitude and her whole disposition that disturbed me, the judge said. I wanted to get through to her, to show her how serious this is and how you are to conduct yourself inside a classroom. I'm cheering for this, judge. Because can you you imagine what her poor attitude might have consisted of? Oh, yeah, 100%. Disrespect and Mm -hmm. whatever. King also threatened her in time with juvenile detention before releasing her. I'll do whatever needs to be done to reach these kids and make sure that they don't end up in front of me, the judge said. The Greening of Detroit, go bleep yourself, released a statement saying the young lady was traumatized. <laughs> oh, oh, that's no. too that, bleeping bad. That's, what she was, that's what's supposed to happen, flower. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. what the judge was teaching her. Yep. Although the judge was trying to teach a lesson of respect, his methods were unacceptable. Oh, bleep you, Chairperson Marissa Ebersole Wood. The group of students should have been simply asked to leave the courtroom if he thought they were disrespectful. No, the judge was trying to help you, you moron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> judge Alia Sabri, who has the number two leadership post at the court, released a statement Wednesday night saying King's conduct does not reflect the standards 
we hold up at at 36th uh, District Court. That's I'm, too bad. I am committed to addressing this matter with the utmost diligence, Sabree said. So it's the judge who's going to be in trouble. It's bass backwards. There was no immediate response to a message from the AP seeking comment for King. So there were so many other ways in which to have helped that young girl learn, said Larry Dubin, a professor at the University of Detroit Mercy Law School. King told WXYZ that he spoke to the girl's parents and offered to be a mentor. The whole thing stinks. The girl was a jerk. The people around her are jerks. And the judge was trying to keep her out of court. And if she was traumatized, maybe that he will keep her out of court. If she had any sense at all, she'd take up that offer of mentorship and yep. do something with her life and not turn out to be a... The, uh, the family already turned it down. The offer. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Saw that right away. Oh, no, we'd rather yeah. have her go to jail. Yeah. And be with the white the judge is a black guy, oh, black guy, which I think is germane because I'm going to suspect that the girl he was admonishing was also a, a black kid. Okay. Yeah, she I don't know that. I, is that right, I Ken? saw a picture. Yes, she, yes she's uh, African-American. So even though he was black, that apparently holds no currency with the people who wish to be permanently offended by everything. The guy well, was tough on her, which he should have been. Yeah. Consider the group she was with, the greening oh. of Detroit. So you know what you're going to get. From you're going to get a bunch of greens. You're going to get your green people. Come on. Get yeah. your greenies. You so-and-sos. I was lucky enough to attend, uh, attend a murder trial as a teenager for a class, and it was fascinating. Falling asleep, not even an option. Did they find you innocent? Hey, now. Hey. Hey. hey, now. Oh, that was hey a now. singer. Him on a ding dong. Oh, did you see I was too fast almost? I was trying yeah. to get it out. Hey, so now. Fast. Like Timing. So oh, fast. Timing. Like, like rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look one more time, Brooke. I'm just so fascinated by this flight aware radar. I can't see straight. I just love it. And you're looking for a Lufthansa plane coming. 482. Uh, We're still doing the show here, here big fellas. One. No, that's, I don't care, Kenny. I have to find this plane for my little friend. See? Well, little uh, buddy. Little some friend. of us try to make a living Oh, well, don't make a living. Here it is. Frankfurt to Minneapolis. <laughs> yep. 482. Yep. She's uh, two minutes from landing. Good. I love to hear that. There you are. Thank I you. Fun. Uh, renewal by Anderson brings you only because. Too bad we don't take calls. We could open up the phone lines and check everybody's flights. Yeah, I'd love if I get the time in the damn. What time you got? Jesus. You know, I was doing Rook a favor, okay? Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, you got to lay off. You know, on this day, well, the only, uh, their renewal by Anderson brings us this, but it's only because they come to us all the way from, uh, in this case, again, Eden Prairie. From the traveling lineman, do you, do you realize that on this day, August fifteenth, in eighteen seventy five, hell, I had eighteen seventy four when I subtracted. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, you were one year old. Yeah, <laughs> on, <laughs> on this day in eighteen seventy five, Bishop Thomas L. Grace dedicated the Church of St. Michael in Stillbo Stillwater with Father John Ireland presiding. Wow. The press of the day acclaimed it as the finest church in the state. Now, I'm unfamiliar with St. Michael in Stillwater. Do you think it still exists? St. Michael's in Stillwater. Yeah. I, I believe it does. You think, have no clue. I think my Uncle well, Jeff... there's a computer. My, my Uncle Jeff may have been. There's a computer. Been. I got done... I done you a good service. You do me one. Yep. Hey. 611 3rd Street South, Stillwater. Still, still, exists. still going. Still going. Still um, going. Pause it a second. Well, how old is Marjorie Johnson? Did you say yesterday? Under, okay, 2024 20, minus 105. 1919 19, 19. minus 105. Oh, my God. 1814. 18. Holy mackerel. <laughs> In 1814, people were walking around the barn saying, you know, 100 years from now, Marjorie Johnson is going to be born. Mass, 
of when Christian Lewis... burial will be at 1030 Friday, April 22nd at the Church of St. Michael. For who? My Uncle Jeff, a couple years ago. Really? Yeah. Didn't oh. Lewis and Clark head out in, what, 1805? Early 1800s. So you go back yeah. to the 1700s for them. No, I mean, Lewis and Clark had just got back a few years yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what, Chris, on this day? You're talking one week before the fair, August 15th? That's the day I'm talking about. When are we going to be there again? <laughs> uh, in- that information is available on the website right now at garagelogic.com. On this day, 815. In 1933, the Barker Carpus Gang robbed South St. Paul Swift and Company of its 30. Thousand dollar payroll, that'd be a lot of money. Somebody yeah, do that one. Yeah. What's thirty grand? What? I got it. In 1933, what would thirty grand be worth today? 30. Police officer Leo Pavlak died in the ensuing shootout. There was a shootout with the Barker. That was Ma Barker. That would be nine hundred and fifty-three thousand one hundred and fifty-one dollars and fifty-two cents today. Sir. That was a hell of a haul for the Barker Carpus Gang, and I knew where Ma Barker lived out in Matamidi. Hmm. Ma Barker and her two sons were complete idiots. Yep. She was not the mastermind. Alan Carpus, though, was a criminal genius. Mm-hmm. Before we get accused of doing bad math, Chris, I got $702,471. <laughs> Let's put it this way without arguing. It was a lot it. of money. They got a lot of dough for the for the 1930s, yeah. Yeah. right? On this day. Well, I, I did an inflation calculator, John, on August 15th. I went to amortization.org. <laughs> on this day. 815. August 15th, 2011. President Barack Obama started a three-day bus tour with a town hall meeting in Cannon Falls. Hmm. I don't recall this. I don't either. After the meeting, his motorcade traveled down Highway 52 through Zumbro, Rochester, Chatfield, Fountain, Preston, and Harmony on its way to the (sighs) Seed Exchange in Decorah, Iowa. Harmony, Minnesota, home of our friends at Harmony oh, Spirits. That's right. I wonder how many times they crossed the Zumbro River. You know, down there, every like six miles you're crossing. Is that how the it river. does it? Like this. Yeah. yeah. It's like Joe going to a wild game. Right. Yeah. Right. Back and forth. <laughs> I don't remember this uh, Obama bus trip. Do you guys? No. I John, don't. do you? I don't. No. Yeah. Did he stop and get some ice cream? No, that's Joe does that. Uh, oh, yeah, Joe Biden. Joe. Yeah, yeah, President Biden. Clinton was an ice cream guy, too, but he never had any money. He was always bumming a right. buck or two off right. somebody with him. Yep. Remember that? He yep. had no money. Yeah, it was I just a little money. ice cream. Yeah. There they got time. rich now, though, didn't Thank they? You. They got a little, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. A lot of people like Trump. Say, what was I going to say? Uh, I was going to say goodbye. You say thank you, G-Others. Uh <laughs> Yes, thank you to the GLers, uh, wonderful people. And we'll see you one week from today at the fair. If you'd like the complete fair schedule, we're here tomorrow. Go to garagelogic.com. I just like to remind the audience every day that that information is available to them because I don't want people to feel left out mm-hmm. that would like to see us at the Great Minnesota Game. And together. remember, if you have plans, uh, you cannot just hop on a plane. Come on. It takes a long time. It was a process. Can you hop on light rail? Yeah, you can kind of have yeah, some Yeah, pretty oh, much. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, do us a favor if you haven't done so. Join the crowd. Join the thousands of GLers that have already signed up for and subscribed to the Garage Logic YouTube channel. On that YouTube channel, we are posting daily content for you. It includes full segments, video shorts, behind the scenes footage, and there's been a lot of cool interaction taking place on the Garage Logic YouTube channel. So thank you so much to all of you that have already done so. And don't forget to sign up to become a member and be a daily logician email subscriber. Yeah, it's an inbo- email that comes right to your inbox each and every day. And it includes the most recent up to date episode of the Garage Logic podcast. 
is time once again that we check in with our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic, and now is the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608. That number once again is 952-925-5608. You call that number, you get Josh, and he is there for you for that free, yes, I use the word free, 48-minute financial consultation with absolutely zero obligation and he will always give you the straight talk he will never give you the sugar-coated advice and he is on the line with us once again here in garage logic and josh i know there's a story that you have been all over and it relates to the new starbucks ceo and it's an incentive laden contract isn't it people start looking at this guy getting paid oh my goodness starbucks is going to pay the new ceo coming over from chipotle 85 million dollars oh my goodness that's it the rich get richer. Got to do something about that outlandish CEO pay. Horror upon horrors. Well, there's a reason that CEOs get paid what they do, but this is a very much incentive-laden contract. I didn't hear anybody bitching and screaming. Well, maybe there were a few people bitching and screaming about the contract that Kirk Cousins signed with the Vikings so many years ago, but that was not incentive-laden. And at the time that he got that I said, more power to them, but I don't understand. Don't understand the deal. You weren't bringing uh, playoff success in Washington. Is that going to change in Minnesota? Good quarterback statistically, but didn't change the Vikings playoff results. Now, on the other hand, the new CEO at Starbucks does have a history of championships. Just look at the results of Chipotle, the results in the stock price while he was there over the last six years. Huge numbers. And who would have thought that a burrito, well, it's more than a burrito stand, but we'll call it a burrito stand, would have this type of results. On the other hand, Starbucks continues to flounder and... They've had had issues, all kinds of of issues, sales going down. Maybe that's a result of too many stores and the price of their drinks and pastries being astronomical. Maybe that's some issues with store management. Maybe it's issues with, you know, complaints and unionization going on. And that's just here in the United States. Maybe it's an issue of, did I say, overexpansion through throughout the world and problems in China with the Chinese economy slowing. We can touch on that in just uh, just a few seconds. But in any case, the new CEO definitely has his work cut out. But the announcement alone did jump the stock as we talked. If we want to gap up from 77 up to 93, I'm not running out to buy Starbucks. I'm not running out to sell Chipotle. As I've said before, I like going to restaurants. I'm not a believer in investing in restaurants restaurant stocks necessarily. If you wanted to invest in restaurants, well, go buy the real estate that the restaurants are on. And you can do that through a real estate investment trust, such as Realty Income Corporation. You'll get a nice dividend and you'll get all of their, all the restaurant stores and then some. Or you could look at some of the other closed end funds that invest in in real estate that'll own some of the the real estate that these uh, stores are in. Starbucks has too many problems. But anyway, the, the CEO's incentive-laden contract, yes, he gets a $10 million guarantee up front. Yes, he's going to get about $75 million in equity award should he meet certain criteria. And yes, he's going to get a $1.6 million a year salary. And if he meets certain criteria, he can get up to an additional $7.2 million a year. And for this work, he's getting paid less than most professional athletes. Athlete. I'm not crying for him, but at the same time, anybody who bitches about CEO pay, I'm sorry, they work hard for that money. Speaking of working hard and trying to look for some bargains, well, the, the Walton family has done wonders uh, with, with Walmart. They do provide a lot of bargains throughout the, the store. No, they don't have the blue light specials that Kmart used to have, but the stores are clean, plenty of product. They are the largest grocer in the United States, and they continue to attract people 
to their stores, and that has increased uh, their sales. And in these inflationary times, and even with inflation coming down a bit, Walmart beat beat the numbers this quarter and raised, and the stock is trading at a new 52-week week high. Many people would look to say, hey, Walmart should be a part of your portfolio because people are always going to be shopping for food and what other bargains they're going to have. Leading retailers still in the United States today where you could look if you'd like to have a portion in retail include Walmart, Costco, and my favorite, of course, is Amazon. Excellent advice, Mr. Money Talk. You heard him, GLers. Now is the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free 48-minute financial consultation. And you do that by dialing 952-925-5608 where you always get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, as always, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a fantastic weekend, and we will talk to you again next week. Go Twins. You got it. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.